The rescue of Denmark's Jews is one of the great untold stories of World War II. During a three-week period in October 1943, Christians in Denmark mounted a massive nationwide effort to save their fellow countrymen from deportation and certain death at the hands of Nazi Germany. Dodging German patrol boats on a rocking sea, Danish citizens risked their lives to clandestinely ferry more than 7,200 Jews, along with hundreds of others, across the Orasund Strait to neutral Sweden. Because of their courageous action, 95% of Denmark's Jews survived Hitler's wrath. As part of its permanent exhibition, Bearing Witness, a community remembers, Holocaust Museum Houston honors these Danish heroes and is privileged to display an authentic fishing boat of the type used to carry Denmark's Jews to safety. The vessel was donated to the museum by Jan Ferdinandsen of the ship brokerage firm N.B. Ferdinandsen & Sons in Gilalaya, Denmark, in memory of his father and father-in-law for their own heroic efforts in the rescue of Danish Jews. Mr. Ferdinandsen was instrumental in locating, acquiring, and refurbishing the fishing boat to its original condition. We, uh, we find it down the coast, and uh, it was uh, a little village very close to Copenhagen. It is a typical vessel for that time where we bring the Jews over to Sweden. And originally named the Christine and then the Jorn Finn, the boat was officially renamed the Hanna Frank in 1985. It looks uh, a little bit rough, but, uh, but uh, it's very good condition. Uh, it started with getting the boat from the local ship dealer and uh, they asked us to bring the boat back in condition as it looks uh, under the Second World War. Measuring over 37 feet long and nearly 14 feet wide, this rare artifact reminds visitors of the heroic acts of ordinary citizens who systematically helped Denmark's Jewish population escape to freedom. Why did Denmark's citizens choose to act while much of the world closed its eyes to Nazi horrors. Unlike some other European countries, Denmark considered its Jewish citizens as equals with other Danes. When Hitler invaded in April of 1940, the Danish government yielded, but in exchange for a German promise to let the Danes run their own domestic affairs. Under that arrangement, Denmark was able to shield its Jewish citizens from deportation and Danish Jews continued to live largely undisturbed. But by the fall of 1943, Germany cracked down and decided to move against the Jews, demanding they be surrendered to be sent to concentration camps. They have all, always looked upon them as countrymen, and now all of a sudden some authority, the, the Nazi authorities, has said those were not Danes, those was, was, was to be considered as Jews, and should therefore be taken away from, from the Danish people. And they, they said it was simply not right to, to do su such a thing with, with Danes. So they, um, they, took, um, they took care of the refugees because they considered them to be uh, countrymen. Denmark's citizens sprang into action. With the help of non-Jewish friends and neighbors, a vast rescue operation had begun. Thousands of Jews swarmed into fishing villages along the Danish coast, hiding in homes, hospitals, and churches until they could be smuggled across the narrow strait to Sweden in ships just like the museum's fishing boat. Village fishermen hid six to eight people at a time inside cramped secret cargo holds covered with fishing nets in case they were stopped by German patrol boats guarding the Danish coast. And when the patrol boats the German patrol boats come, the fishermen said, hello, what are you doing? Yeah, we are out fishing, very close, three miles from Sweden. It's okay. And if they come on board, they couldn't see anything. They lay the Jews under the deck. A shining example of Danish heroism occurred in the coastal town of Gilalaya. In the early days of October 1943, Gilalaya's own 500 households helped an estimated 1,300 Jews escape from Denmark. And that's 20-25% uh, of the Danish uh, Jewish population at that time. So that was a real great mission for the people in Gidelaya. 
While hiding and awaiting transport, townspeople provided food and medicine. It was the entire town's public secret kept from the Nazi soldiers. They came down here from the station, tried to get aboard a ship, and then they heard that sh shouting that the Nazis were coming, so they fleed from here and took hide wherever they could. Many of the refugees in Gilalaya took cover inside the loft of the local church, and from small windows could see the Swedish coastline, their freedom within reach less than an hour away. You cannot repeat the feeling of anxiety. You cannot repeat the weather or the darkness or the, the, the silence that was, was up here. But we have our church clock, which still works. And while the refugees were sitting up here, they were listening to that sound, the tick tock from the clock, minute after minute, hour after hour. And some ref refugees called it like a heartbeat. And of course, they hoped that their own hearts would keep on beating. Suddenly, the, the, the German uh, headquarters uh, knew that there was a stream of uh, Jews coming over from this area to Sweden. And of course, then they had to do something about it. Word was leaked to the Gestapo. And on the night of October 6th, some 80 Jews were discovered in the church attic. At some time during the night, they were told that there was uh, Jews here in the church and then they came with trucks and soldiers and between two and three in the night they came up here, up the stairs and with their flashlight uh, pointing at all the people and t telling them to, to get up and get down to the trucks and then they were, were taken away to a Danish prison and then to Terracin. They became part of Denmark's 481 Jewish citizens who were captured by the Nazis and deported to Theresienstadt, a detainment camp in Czechoslovakia. Of that number, nearly all survived. And in April of 1945, as the war drew to a close, the surviving Danish Jews were turned over to the Red Cross, and many returned to their homes in Denmark. The rescue of Denmark's Jews is considered one of the largest actions of collective resistance in all of occupied Europe. As history looks back on this extraordinary story of courage and leadership, the Danish fishing vessel placed alongside the museum's Holocaust-era rail car provides a stark contrast. One means of transport carried people to their deaths while many stood idly by. The other showed how an entire nation mobilized and responded to evil even in the face of great danger. This boat that saved uh, people's life was steered by a man who risked his life saving others' life. They don't see themselves as heroes. They were just uh, doing what they thought was the right thing. The boat serves as a powerful reminder of the courage of those who refuse to be bystanders of atrocities against humanity. It sends a message of hope about what can be achieved when ordinary citizens stand up against hatred and injustice, no matter the cost.